Hi, welcome to ImageKit. In this video, we'll take a quick look at how you can start using ImageKit if you're looking to migrate from Cloudinary. We have covered it in detail in our docs. If you head to the guides section under migrate to ImageKit, we have a complete documentation of how you can migrate from Cloudinary, including steps on connecting your existing media library or connecting your backup storage, making use of the URL rewriter, etc. In this video, we'll actually go through the dashboard and demonstrate some ways in which you can migrate from Cloudinary to ImageKit and also talk about the differences in the pricing structure that actually make ImageKit much more economical than Cloudinary for most of our customers. With ImageKit, you get almost the same features that you get with Cloudinary. So you get the same image transformations, you get optimizations, you get media streaming and a complete digital asset management solution as well. Uh, and a very similar URL based API but the main differences, which we'll go through in a bit, are on the way ImageKit integrates, not just with its internal DAM, but also with external storages, and also the way pricing works in ImageKit that provides you with a lot of flexibility as your traffic grows or as your requirement grows, right? Uh, let's quickly get started and take a look at the ImageKit dashboard, right? So, so if you're using Cloudinary's media library, you would probably be familiar with an interface like this where you can upload your images either from the dashboard or using APIs. So ImageKit also offers you a very similar digital asset management product under the media library section. Uh, not just let's say storage, but this is a complete digital asset management product with the ability to share files with individuals or share folders with individuals, comment on them, version them, etc. So if you want to continue using the media library the way that you were using it with Cloudinary, you can switch to using ImageKit's media library. It is accessible via this dashboard. And we also have a bunch of APIs available for you to interact with the storage with the ability to, let's say, upload files to be able to manage files and folders in this media library. So you can switch from Cloudinary's media library to ImageKit's media library uh, using a very similar set of APIs. And if you want to move your existing images from your Cloudinary storage to ImageKit, you can use our APIs to upload the new files to ImageKit's media library, or we also have an ImageKit CLI. This CLI is specifically designed for migration of Cloudinary storage to ImageKit. You just have to provide some basic parameters for it to get working, and you can migrate small amounts of storages from your Cloudinary storage to ImageKit using this CLI as well. For larger migrations, you can obviously reach out to our team and we'll help you with the, what's the best possible way of migrating your Cloudinary storage to ImageKit Media Library. Let's say you do not want to use the Media Library. It is possible that you want to be in control of your images, you want to move them to an external storage, or maybe you were using Cloudinary already with an external storage like AWS S3, right? In that case, ImageKit is actually much simpler to use. We can connect ImageKit with any popular cloud storage, including let's say Amazon S3, Google Cloud Storage, Azure, any web server that's accessible over HTTP, or if you're using let's say image fetch kind of URLs or video fetch kind of URLs in Cloudinary, then you can use the web proxy external storage connector. Or if you were using the media library and you've already created a backup using the Cloudinary backup functionality, you can also connect the Cloudinary backup bucket which has a very different uh, folder structure inside the bucket. You can connect that bucket directly with ImageKit and ImageKit understands how to pick up files from that bucket and be able to deliver the optimized and transformed versions of images or videos from that bucket. When you connect an external storage, we do not start copying these files to the media library, right? These external storages are accessed only when you actually request a file via the ImageKit URL. And then we would actually go to the connected storage, access the original file, do all the optimization transformations in real time and send back the file. Once you have, let's say your assets uploaded to the media library, or you have connected your external storage or the Cloudinary backup bucket to ImageKit, you just need to map it to a URL endpoint. A URL endpoint is what allows you to access an external storage that you have connected. So in this case, I have a S3 bucket and I have connected it to this URL endpoint. If you look at it, it's very similar to your Cloudinary URL structure, similar to rest.cloudinary.com followed by the cloud ID. Similarly, this is the default URL that you have for accessing content via ImageKit. Now, if I use this URL, I can access the image, let's say that is stored in my S3 bucket. 
like this right so this file is not there in the media library image kit has actually gone back to the connected s3 bucket uh in the same way it can go back to your connected cloudinary backup bucket and get the file from there and do all the optimizations and transformations in real time one major difference between cloudinary and image kit is that even without any adding any parameters image kit does optimize your image for example we are able to convert the image to avif format and it is at 268 kbs and in fact to access the original image you have to add a parameter to the url this is unlike cloudinary where you have to add f auto and q auto parameters to optimize the images image kit takes care of it automatically using some settings in the dashboard for optimization of images like optimization to the best format optimization to the right quality and the same for videos as well so even without adding anything to the url we'll take care of the optimization and compression for your requirement now to make the migration simple image kit also offers a very unique feature which is called the cloudinary url rewriter if i head to the url endpoint under advanced settings you can see that i have this url rewriter enabled and i have selected cloudinary as the url rewriter that i want uh, we have covered this in a lot more detail in the same uh, documentation on how does the Cloudinary URL Rewriter work. Basically, it can understand a Cloudinary transformation and convert it internally to an image kit transformation so that you do not have to make any change to the URL. Uh, your URLs can still continue using Cloudinary transformations and internally image kit would be able to understand what they mean in image kits terms and apply the appropriate transformation on the output image or out the output video. Now, we have already listed the transformations that are supported via the Cloudinary uh, Rewriter, as well as in our documentation, you would be able to see all the other transformations that may not be supported via the Rewriter, but in general are available in ImageKit, right? But if I just talk about the Rewriter over here in this case, once the Rewriter is enabled, you can actually see in this URL that I have a very cloudinary kind of transformation, which is W300H300C fill. I also have the versioning, which is very typical of cloudinary to have this sort of versioning in the URL, to have image upload in the URL. So I have all of this in the URL. ImageKit is able to remove some parts of it, understand, let's say that this is a 300 by 300 output file that's requested. And this is the output that you are getting. We are also removing the versioning part of the URL when the rewriter is turned on. And if you just check, the image is actually located at the root of the media library, right? So if I would have accessed it using image kit, you can see that the file is there at the base of the media library. And I could have transformed this using the image kit parameters as well. But in this case, with the Cloudinary rewriter enabled, you can see that most of my url is similar to that on cloudinary and the only change effectively that we are making is sort of instead of rest.cloudinary.com slash cloud id we have ik.imagekit.io followed by the image kit id or if you would have been using let's say you would have been using a custom domain name with cloudinary we can set up that custom domain with image kit as well and your url will remain exactly the same you probably would just have to do a small DNS switch to get your media delivery going from Cloudinary. It will start going via ImageKit. The same Cloudinary rewriter and transformations also work with videos. So in this example, you can see that the same transformations have been applied to a video file and ImageKit is able to resize the video as expected in the transformation parameters. As mentioned earlier, you can refer to the transformations that are supported via the rewriter in our documentation and all the other transformations and optimizations are also covered inside our documentation. Now let's quickly talk about the pricing plans, right? ImageKit offers a completely free plan and we also have one paid plan that is available. The difference is that ImageKit's paid plans after the base monthly price, the, we have a pay as you go pricing model, which means that after the inclusions, let's say you used up the 225 GB output bandwidth, you no longer have to switch to a higher plan. We have an overage that is available that for every 20 GB, you keep paying $1.9, or let's say you have 225 GB included, you pay $1.9 for every 100 GB of that. And similarly for all the other units, there is an inclusion and then there is an overage pricing. So 
it is possible that you can fulfill your requirement in the base plan of dollar 89 or let's say if instead of 225 gb you're using 250 gb of media delivery bandwidth then you only pay a small increment on this 89 dollar base plan instead of having to jump to a completely new plan and increase your cost the other major difference is that ImageGate does not charge for the number of requests or the number of transformations. And even in storage, we only charge for the storage which you explicitly upload to the media library, right? So if you are if you are generating image transformations or video transformations, and those thumbnails are actually generating some storage, we do not charge for that. We only charge for something that is explicitly uploaded to the media library. ImageKit also offers a custom domain name for every paid plan, five user seats, which obviously can be extended with the pay as you go pricing, and you get the best possible support, which a lot of our customers like getting support from an actual technical engineer who can help you understand not only the features in ImageKit, but also probably recommend a few best practices when you are integrating ImageKit on your website and app. So this pricing model, along with ImageKit's ability to connect to external storage and the integrated media library that we offer, has added a lot of value to our customers. They have been able to save more than 30% on their costs while getting the same or better features than what they used to get with Cloudinary. And if your consumption is high, let's say you are already consuming more than one terabyte of bandwidth or more than one terabyte of storage on Cloudinary, you are eligible to contact us for the custom pricing plan. Or even if you have some questions about the migration on how would the different features work, you can always go to our contact us page, fill in the details, and our team will get in touch with you to help you migrate from Cloudinary to ImageKit. Meanwhile, if you have any other questions, do browse to our documentation, especially the migration from Cloudinary documentation, that will answer most of the questions you have. And if you still have other questions, please reach out to us by filling out this contact form or by emailing us at support at imagekid.io.